I'm John Bauer for Advanced Distributor Products. Today, I want to talk about the upcoming refrigerant transition that's beginning this year and introduce an exciting new product that's designed to help HVAC installers make it through that transition, ADP's FlexCoil. FlexCoil is exactly as the name implies, one coil, any refrigerant, offering the flexibility you need for 2024 and beyond. With the transition, there are two key dates we need to keep in mind. January 1 of 2025 and January 1 of 2026. Under the new EPA rules, installation of systems beginning January 1, 2025 must use a refrigerant with a low global warming potential, or low GWP. However, until January 1 of 2026, R410A systems can still be installed. But the specified components in those installations such as condensers and evaporator coils, must be manufactured prior to January 1 of 2025. As you can expect, all manufacturers have been concentrating their efforts to get their products designed and in the market as quickly as possible to be ready for the transition. However, we know that they all won't release at the same time. This is gonna cause a need in the market for evaporator coils and air handlers for both refrigerants through the entire transition period, and it'll create challenges in managing inventory for distributors. I know all of this can be confusing, but that's where ADP's FlexCoil steps in and provides the solution. FlexCoil is a full line of coils and air handlers certified for both refrigerant types. That means FlexCoil is forward and backward compatible. So whether you're installing an R410A system or one of the new low GWP system, FlexCoil has got you covered. Before we take a look at FlexCoil, let's talk a little bit more about the requirements for these new refrigerants. The majority of residential split systems are expected to use either R454B or R32 for their low GWP products. Where R410A has a classification as A1, these two refrigerants are classified as A2L which means they're mildly flammable. Because of that, under the new safety standard, most systems using an A2L refrigerant will be required to have a refrigerant detection system or RDS installed. An RDS is comprised of a leak detection sensor and controls so that when refrigerant is detected, it will turn off the outdoor unit and turn on the indoor blower to reduce the concentration of refrigerant. Once the concentration of refrigerant drops low enough, it will allow the system to return to normal operation. Now let me show you how easy it is to configure ADP's flex coil for one of these refrigerants, including installing the RDS. All ADP flex coils come with a sensor bracket pre-installed in the approved location and all flex coils have mechanical fit connections to install or change the metering device, such as a TXV. You'll need the TXV kit specific for your application, along with ADP's RDS kit. The RDS kit comes with everything you need to configure flex coil for R454B or R32 refrigerant. We have a dual calibrated sensor for both refrigerants, a control board with an enclosure for easily mounting to a nearby surface, mounting hardware, and all the necessary warning labels for the appropriate refrigerant. To begin, remove the front panels, pull the coil forward, and remove the drain connection foam seal. Then remove the sensor bracket by rotating up from the bottom and sliding off the top edge of the drain pan. With the sensor bracket removed, now's a good time to install the new TXV. Be sure to confirm the appropriate refrigerant type and TXV size for your application and refer to the instructions provided with the TXV kit to complete the installation. Next, mount the sensor to the bracket using two screws from the RDS kit. Refer to the installation instructions that comes with the RDS kit for the sensor orientation. In the next step, we're gonna reinstall the bracket with sensor onto the coil. To help with that, straighten the top two tabs, 
so that the bracket will slip back over the pan easier. Once we get the bracket back onto the coil, in order to lock it into place, we will bend the top two tabs back over the top of the drain pan, and then we'll bend the bottom tab underneath the bottom of the drain pan to make sure that the bracket and sensor are secure on the coil. To help bend the bottom tab, lift the coil up slightly. Place the foam seal back over the drain connections and slide the coil back into the cabinet. It's important to create a drip loop in the sensor cable. Refer to the installation instructions provided with the RDS kit for proper sensor cable mounting and routing. Before installing the front panel, mark the nameplate to permanently identify the refrigerant and metering device configuration. Locate the sensor cable knockout on the front panel and remove it. Then install the sensor cable rubber grommet from the RDS kit. The next step is to apply the warning labels from the RDS kit. And now our flex coil is configured for a low GWP installation. We've changed the metering device. We've installed the leak detection sensor. We've added the required safety warning labels. And we've permanently marked the nameplate with the refrigerant configuration. Next steps, we'll install onto the furnace and wire in the controller to complete the installation. Next in the process, you'll mount the evaporator coil on the furnace or the indoor blower unit and wire the RDS controller. Here's what that'll look like. Our sensor has an 80 inch cable giving you multiple options to mount the controller. Refer to the RDS installation manual for suitable locations. For this demonstration, we've simulated a wall close to the unit. The sensor cable has a molded plastic connector that easily plugs into the controller and the controller has ports for two sensors. The vast majority of installations will only require one leak detection sensor. However, there may be a few uncommon instances where two sensors are required. Refer to the RDS installation manual for specific information regarding the appropriate sensor ports and dip switch settings for your installation. Our controller operates from 24 volt input and has large screw terminals making it easy to install while providing the options you need to handle any installation. Single stage, two stage, AC or heat pump, the controller works for all and more. The thermostat is connected to the left side of the board noted by the black terminals. On this same side, we see the outputs to the outdoor unit. The blue terminals on the right side of the board is where we see the outputs to the indoor furnace or the indoor blower unit. Additionally, the board has an LED to signal the state of the controller. It has a test and reset button to test certain functions, and it has dry contacts for zoning as well as an alarm output. The thermostat input signals pass through the controller to the outdoor and indoor unit while in normal operation. So what happens if there's a leak? The RDS installation manual will give you a lot more detail on modes of operation, LED flash codes, and other functions. But just to give you a basic understanding, when the sensor detects a leak, the controller begins the mitigation process and cuts the signal to the outdoor unit 
At the same time, it turns on the fan terminals for the indoor unit. Once the refrigerant concentration drops low enough, the controller will allow the system to go back into normal operation. That's all there is to it. It's similar to wiring in other safety features in an HVAC system, such as a float switch. For this demonstration, we've shown you how to configure an upflow furnace coil. But please note, flex coil is available on all evaporator coils and air handler product lines from ADP. I hope that answers all your questions about flex coil and how it will help you with the low GWP refrigerant transition. But if you have more questions or simply want more information about flex coil or any other ADP products, visit our website at adpnow.com or contact our tech support at adp.techsupport at adpnow.com or you can reach out to us on social media.